Well, back in 2019, South Africa launched its national action plan to combat xenophobia, racism and discrimination, marking an important step towards addressing the widespread human rights abuses arising from xenophobic and gender-based violence and discrimination that continue to plague South Africa. Now, the five-year plan developed in a consultative process between the government and civil society aims to raise public awareness about anti-racism and equality measures to improve access to justice and better protection for victims and increase anti-discrimination efforts to help achieve a greater equality and justice. On that note, uh, we are going to bring in advocate um, Tseliso Tipanyane for uh, more on this discussion. Advocate, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon to you and to your viewers. I mean, uh, with uh, South Africa, of course, and it's 27 years and democracy, we're looking at uh, the socioeconomic issues, which largely have been, uh, you know, exacerbated by the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. I, mean, I wonder if you can contextualize to date, can South Africa be a truly non-racial and all-inclusive society? Well, it's an ideal which we are working towards. Uh, our own constitution makes it very clear that you know the founding values of our country is also includes non-racialism and we've passed laws like the Equality Act, set up bodies like the Human Rights Commission uh, to fight this. We need to appreciate, of course, that we come from a long history of uh, racism in our country and therefore, you know, this will not be solved overnight. But the National Action Plan is an attempt then by, by the government, you know, to bring everything under one roof uh, with policies, uh, institutions and laws, uh, and of course, efforts of everybody else in our country to basically work in a much more systematic and cohesive manner uh, to address these issues. Uh, the hearing of the, of the Human Rights Commission on the unrest, you know, uh, highlights the challenges around issues of racism, as we have seen, for example, uh, with the racial killings uh, in, in, in Durban and Peter Marys Bay. So there's still a lot of work which needs to be done uh, in our country. Sec secondly, the inequalities in our country, you know, in terms of wealth, uh, also take a, a racial profile. So this actually shows, you know, a lot of work still has to be done in this regard. Absolutely, Advocate. I think also to understand what is currently transpiring in South Africa, we definitely have to look at um, the origins um, of the contemporary lived reality in South Africa. I wonder by looking at the history of oppression in South Africa historically, you know, what has occurred perhaps to have perpetuated and also maintained the, the current status quo, whether it's in relation to discrimination, racism, xenophobia, gender-based violence, amongst many of the other socioeconomic issues we're facing today? Yeah, look, sadly, you know, no one is born a racist. So, so society actually creates a racist. A racist. Mm. And therefore, this is one of the biggest challenges in our country. How do we ensure that we all unlearn racism and we ensure that, you know, we don't produce uh, races of the future. So we really have to hammer on our, you know, our, on our efforts in our homes, in our schools, in our institutions. But also we need to have a much more uh, effective implementation of laws which, which are here in the country in order to give effect, uh, you know, to issues of non-racialism, Equality Act, Employment Equity Act. So I think uh, the, the last Our oh, advocate um, Tseliso Tipanyane again just chatting to us uh, about, uh, about the National Action Plan. Mid-conversation, advocate, we did seem to lose you there. I think you were just contextualizing some of the, um, the, the historic origins of the uh, lived reality in, in a contemporary society like South Africa in relation to sexism, racism and discrimination at large. Do continue with your thoughts. Yes. Now, I was saying, you know, um one of the challenges in our country is basically to change the mindset of South Africans because racism is actually a land and a taught behavior. And if we don't change the mindset of South Africans, uh, we can have good laws, but you know that will still be a problem. And the past 27 years show that, that you know, we've got the Equality Act, which is more than 20 years, but we're still having incidences like we're seeing in Phoenix and in Devon. We're still having, a, 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 in Peter Maris, but we're still having in our country inequalities, actually increasing inequalities in our country in terms of wealth, which continues to take a racial profile.
Mm. Well, you know, looking at indicators of growth and oppression, um, obviously it, it happens on a, on a multidisciplinary level, Advocate. And I wonder, by looking at ways to combat xenophobia, combat racism and discrimination at large, what has been done? How effective has it been to date? You know, we, as I was saying, we passed the Equality Court uh, in 2000. Uh, it will be 20 years uh, plus a few more years. We have equality courts, about 300 of them in the country. But, you know, I'm not sure whether they're being used adequately. So it means we really need to intensify uh, our advocacy work. So one could say, you know, from a legal point of view, we've passed good laws from institutions. We've got good institutions like the Human Rights Commission, Gender Commission, so forth. But, you know, I think a lot more still needs to be done. And I think this is the purpose of this plan that, you know, let us try and, and work together much more closely and much more effectively uh, so that we really uh, we move from where we are today, uh, 27 years later, into our democracy. Absolutely. Advocate Siliso Dibanyani, uh, the CEO of Human Rights Commission, again, just chatting to us about the latest developments. Uh, uh, just as we uh, look back in South Africa in 2019, uh, having launched its national action plan to combat xenophobia, racism and discrimination, which uh, perhaps marked an important step towards the widespread human rights abuses arising from uh, you know, xenophobia and also gender-based violence and discrimination that continues to plague South Africa. Again, chatting about the progress to date, what more needs to be done and uh, ways we can navigate some of the power structures and dynamics that pervade a contemporary South Africa and uh, ways that we can perhaps uh, do work towards achieving a greater equity, equality and justice for all.